Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In this video I'll be talking you through a common error code A10 on a Hotpoint Aquarius dishwasher. We're working on an FDM 550. This video can be used for many models of Hotpoint machine and also Indeset machines. If your dishwasher has flashing lights, this normally is pointing to an error. These flashing lights sometimes indicate what type of error you have. On this machine you can see the lights flashing and it's indicating that we have an A10 error fault which means that the actual machine has got a heater fault problem. On this machine the symptoms were as follows. We start the machine on a normal wash cycle. It then starts to empty as it normally would. Then it goes into the fill cycle and you can see the machine start to wash. But after about 10-15 minutes, the error warning light appears. This error code was the salt and rinse aid lights flashing, and so were the start, pause and drying lights flashing. So what we need to do now is disconnect the machine from the electricity supply, drain the machine down so there's no water in the machine and disconnect it from the water supply and tilt the machine onto its back. On this model of machine we have an inspection cover at the bottom which makes it nice and easy for us to access the base of the machine. On some other models you may have to remove the whole base or on other models sometimes you have to access the compartment from the front or the sides. But this cover just clips off and you're able to remove it now I'll quickly talk you through the components on the machine. On the top left here you can see this is the drain pump. Then at the bottom we have the water valve which goes through to the fill system on the left hand side. The pressure switch on this model is on the right hand side and this is the anti-flood device. And here is the main motor. Now the heater is built into the motor on this model so you actually have to find the ends of the element and put your meter across to check if you have continuity. Now I'm going to show you the new one. The wires to the heater are connected with a plug. Now you can either test the heater across the two terminals on the plug. This will allow you to test for continuity but do remember that the heater has a couple of sensors built into it which might have gone also open circuit. So the best way of actually testing the element itself is to go across the two terminals on the element. And as you can see this new one is all perfect but when we test the old one we have an open circuit which means we have no continuity. And therefore the element is dead so we need to take off the whole pump assembly. Now the easiest way of doing this is firstly the clips are a non reusable type of clip so you are going to have to buy some Jubilee clips. Now you can either undo the clip but what I do recommend if possible that you remove the one pipe by undoing the screws that you can see that I'm doing here. This will allow you to take off the pump easily and not have this pipe in the way. And then we'll remove the clip after. So it's just four screws. Now you need to undo the wiring harness and take the earth wire off. Some of the edges on this pump are very sharp so do be careful. But once you've got the earth wire off and the main motor, um, the heater plug and the motor plug undone, you'll be able to slide the motor out of its holder, which is at the bottom. So you slightly have to lift it up and there's not a lot of room. So just take your time and you need to twist it sideways to get the pump out. While I'm doing this, uh, I have put links to the heater unit on the top left hand side and also for mobile users in the description and on the info button, which you can see pop out there. 
and now we've got the old heater out attached to the motor still I'm able to show you what I was doing you just need to test across the two terminals and as you can see the thermostats are fine or the cutout stats but the heater itself is dead so this heater unit needs to be replaced and here's the new one just so you can see so go across the two terminals on the heater and we have continuity and on the old one there is no continuity so we need to change this out now as I said the clips that hold the pipe in place are non reusable and the pump has to be twisted anti-clockwise off the motor now I will tell you now this is quite a hard job because it's very uh, stiff and the edges are very sharp so you'll need a cloth make sure you protect your hand completely and just twisting it you can see the clips coming out from their holders just there and then you need to wiggle the motor and it comes away from the heater housing now with the new heater you do get a new o-ring so take the old one off the motor make sure you clean up all the surfaces very well you will get some water at coming out of the pump but you need to clean up all these surfaces get rid of all the calcium and then fit the new seal once it's all cleaned up now fitting the pump back onto the new housing you really want to be using some type of uh, lubricant it's very stiff getting it onto the actual uh, housing and uh, I just use some uh, gel that I've got Vaseline should do the job or you can use some fairy liquid uh, but this housing is quite hard to get on as you can see I'm putting plenty of lubricant on both surfaces all the way around to help me fit the housing back onto the motor and again I do emphasize this I've cut my hand on these on many occasions and they are very sharp edges now it's also a good idea before you start the job uh, one thing I should have said earlier was it's a good idea to put some marks on the pump on where everything has to line up as you can see the clip at the top there that goes to the bottom of the machine and the hoses need to be set correctly and there's the clip and you do have to use a considerable amount of force to actually get this on correctly make sure you line the lugs up correctly don't jam the seal inspect it all the way around that you've got it fitting f correctly in place before twisting and again remember to use the cloth as those edges are very sharp and there you go it's locked in place now all we need to do is to take the other hose off just use a small flat blade screwdriver carefully prise the clip apart make sure you don't do any damage to the hose just take your time and now we've got that off we can replace it with a Jubilee clip you will notice there are some uh, lining marks on the hose for you to put the hose on correctly so the motor goes up like that and you just get the hose on line them up on their marks
I'm using slightly large Jubilee clips so make sure if you are using large Jubilee clips you do not let the Jubilee clip itself interfere with any of the electrics. And you can see the location lugs on that hose. They just line up on the plastic there. And we'll just do this up. While I'm doing this, do remember to support the website uh, by buying your parts from us. There's also some relevant links that will take you through to the full tutorial on this repair. And also there are some links which will take you through to other Hotpoint and Indeset error codes on dishwashers. We also have live chat on the website, so if you do need help, we will try and assist you where we can. Just take your time fitting the motor back into place. It is a tight fit in there. Once you've got it in, just line it up on the location at the bottom there and it slides down and now we're ready to refit the hoses. You don't want to over tighten uh, these Jubilee clips because uh, you are connecting to plastic and if you put too much tension onto the Jubilee clip you could end up splitting some of the plastic fittings so you only need it to be reasonably tight uh, but not over tight. And once we've got the whole machine together, I'll show you the machine working and also show you a quick way of doing a leak check without the base plate on. Now, when fitting these four screws, do not tighten them until you've got all four in place, as this will allow you to line it up correctly. And again, these are metal screws going into plastic, so do not over tighten. While I'm doing this, if you do need a heater system for your dishwasher or any other parts, we will need the full model number off the identification plate. The number that is normally written on the facial panel is not always the correct number. So you must always take the number off the identification plate. On this machine you can see it's Hotpoint FDM550P with the serial number built into the right and also the type uh, below. All that will be relevant information for us. And there we go. The dishwasher is ready to put up. We're not going to put the cover plate on at the bottom because I'm going to show you how to test for leaks as you're normally working on a floor and don't have the facilities of a test bay. So we'll turn the machine on now. And as you can see, pumps out and then starts to fill. The motor will engage as before. And you can see the motor is drawing 0.5 of an amp. And in a second, uh, I'll come back to it, and you can see the heater is now running. And we're drawing 7.3 amps, and the machine is nice and hot now. No error code appearing, and there you go. The machine's all working again. Now, a quick way to test for leaks is with the cover plate off, if you put some newspaper or a piece of cardboard underneath, after it's been running for five minutes or so, any marks of water on that paper would indicate that you have a leak. And there you go. I hope you found this video helpful. Please remember to support the website. And if you did find it exceedingly helpful, you can always donate by buying us a beer. Thanks very much indeed for watching.